WWAY presents Unsolved, shining light on cold cases in the Cape Fear. It was like being hit with a sledgehammer. It really changed everything. From a missing persons case to a murder, after more than 20 years, a family wants answers. A 22-year-old shot while sitting in a car and still no answers, no motive, and no suspects. And proof that your tips can make a difference. This case I featured led to an arrest and a conviction. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Hannah Patrick. There are dozens of unsolved cases across the Cape Fear region, from missing people to murders. Some of these cases have witnesses, witnesses who, for whatever reason, never came forward. For the next half hour, we will feature as many of those cases as we can, hoping to shed more light on each victim and crime and bring answers to their families. We begin in New Hanover County, a woman missing since 2000. For nearly eight years, it was a missing persons case until investigators received a tip that changed everything. But that tip wasn't quite enough because what happened to Pamela Bradshaw remains unsolved. She was just the life of every party, just happy and friendly. Nikki Alder says her mom, Pamela Bradshaw, would do anything for anyone. We had a great relationship. I mean, there was nothing in the world that she wouldn't do for me, you know, given her circumstances. Those circumstances created many struggles, but Alder says Bradshaw was always a good mom. Pam has my mom been involved with drugs since a teenager. And that was one of the reasons why she got sent here to try to get clean and better herself. But on September 20th, 2000, everything changed. She watched our daughter for us. Um, we went to dinner, came back, and she was supposed to spend the night, but I took her back home. When Alder dropped her mom off near Red Cross on 5th Street in Wilmington, it was the last time she ever saw her. So what point did she start feeling weird about not hearing from her? That night, okay. because she was on a routine where every day she had to call me every hour on the hour, so I knew that she was fine. Alder says she called over and over. She didn't have like a cell phone or anything like that, but she did live with a man, uh, Mr. Williams, so I would call his residence. Nobody had heard from her. She says Williams saw Bradshaw that night. And all he stated was that when I left, she went back out and he seen a white car with a blue soft top. She got in and that was that. Detective Kevin Whitley with the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office says Bradshaw was reported missing to Wilmington Police on May 31st, 2001. But the case became a homicide in 2008. A tip came in from an anonymous caller that provided information that they believe Pamela Bradshaw was actually taken by individuals to a house in the county in the Murrayville area um, and that she was killed and her body was disposed of. It was like being hit with a sledgehammer. It really changed everything. Whitley says detectives searched that house on Murrayville Road in 2010. Looking for any signs of, uh, of a murder that had happened, looking for Pamela's body. There was some evidence collected. Uh, ultimately, Pamela's body was not recovered uh, during that search. So there were still questions left unanswered. Whitley and Alder do believe Bradshaw was killed the night she went missing. They just need help finding those last few answers that would bring the justice Bradshaw deserves. They need to be prosecuted. If I committed a crime, I would be prosecuted. And the closure the family deserves. If it was your mother, your sister, your brother, you know, any family member that was taken away from you and you have information or someone else has information, you know, please come forward. She has grandkids, you know, she has a mom that's going on 90 and, you know, before she leaves this world, I want closure. If you have any information in this case, please contact the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. In Wilmington, police are looking for the people responsible for killing a man sitting in a car in 2004. Wilmington police say 22-year-old Terry Green was shot early in the morning on June 24, 2004 on Glen Street near downtown Wilmington. Police say someone approached the vehicle and shot Green, who was sitting in the passenger seat of the car. Green later died at the hospital. If you have any information on this case, please call Wilmington Police. Also in Wilmington, a mass shooting remains unsolved. Police continue to investigate what happened on Kidder Street in April of 2021 during a party. The shooting left three people dead and four others injured. Detective Shannon Walker with the Wilmington Police Department says it happened just after midnight on April 3rd at 710 Kidder Street. Three people were killed. Zaya Wade, Shamir Jones, and 16-year-old Destiny Rowland. 
Walker says more than 30 people in their teens and early 20s were at a birthday party when it happened. But still, he says police are having a hard time getting information from witnesses, and that has been frustrating for the victim's families. I don't know why everybody's so scared. If it was their family member, how would they feel? If it was their sister, how would they feel? If it was their loved ones, let's prevent this from happening to somebody else because I can never get my sister back. But I at least want justice for her. Multiple people called 911 to report what was happening inside the party. To see much more on this story, go to our website at www.awytv3.com. If you have any information, please contact Wilmington Police or you can remain anonymous by texting your tip to 411. Wilmington police have made it clear they rely on the community's help when it comes to solving crimes. But a lot of times, people are afraid to come forward. As WAY Sydney Bouchel reports, if you know something, you can report it anonymously. The old saying goes, if you see something, say something, and you can help solve crimes and remain completely anonymous. Using the Wilmington NCPD app, criminal intelligence analyst Nicholas Hoover says community members with information can submit tips by sending messages to police on the app or over text without giving out their identity. The technology removes all identifying information before police see the tips and uh, we do not receive the name, phone number or address, so there's no way that we can identify the sender. But just how anonymous is text 411? According to police, they wouldn't even be able to get the sender's information even if they were subpoenaed. It would actually be impossible to get the sender's information because TIP 401, it, that information, it's, it's sent outside of the country. With cases like Kidder Street remaining unsolved, it's more important than ever to have options like this helping law enforcement while keeping at-risk community members safe. Some people may not feel comfortable calling the police and having their uh, name you know, attached to the call or having police even meet them. So it's a great tool in order to be anonymous and actually come forward with your information. In an effort to get more cases solved, Hoover hopes locals will use the program to end violence in the Cape Fear. Anything helps to be able to connect the dots. And with a program like this where you can stay 100% anonymous, um, you can feel safe and, and right that you're being able to provide us the information that we need while still being anonymous. In Wilmington, Sydney Bouchel, WWAY News. We have more information on our website at www.awytv3.com. There's an unsolved case in the Cape Fear that started as a missing person in Brunswick County. We'll show you why it turned into a homicide investigation in New Hanover County. This next case crossed county lines. Detectives from New Hanover County Sheriff's Office and the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office are trying to figure out what happened to a woman who went missing in 1995. What happened to Julia Rodriguez remains unsolved. She was very petite. She was only about four feet, eight inches tall. Julia Rodriguez didn't stand very tall, but she was known to stand her ground. She was described as somebody who would not take disrespect from anybody without letting them know. She kind of stood, stood up for herself and her daughter. Mary Doncourt, a civilian investigative specialist with the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office, says in 1995, Rodriguez lived in a trailer park on Village Road near Navassa with a 12-year-old she took in at a young age. She'd been in Brunswick County for about, what, six years, six, seven years. Don Court says on October 28th, 1995, Rodriguez and the 12 year old were at home. She told the 12 year old that she was going to the store, would be back shortly. To the food line at Leland to get lettuce and tomatoes. And was never seen again. As the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office began an extensive search looking for Rodriguez, the new Hanover County Sheriff's Office got a phone call. On November 3rd, 1995, Julia's vehicle was found burned uh, in a wooded area in the Castle Hain area off Blue Clay Road. Detective Nicholas Lee with the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office says a hunter found Julia's green 1980 Datsun hatchback. About where that pine tree that's fallen over. The vehicle was it burned extensively. There were no remains found in the vehicle. Lee says Julia's disappearance turned into a murder investigation. Throughout the course of the investigation, there have been several 
people of interest identify. Suspects were developed early on, but no arrests have ever been made. Lee says something happened before Rodriguez disappeared. Somebody, uh, we don't know who, appeared to have it out for Julia. He says her car was vandalized several times within a year of her disappearance. Her tires were slashed, uh, sugar was put in her fuel tank. At one point, the brake lines were cut, which almost caused her and her daughter to get into a wreck when driving down the road. Lee says whatever happened to Rodriguez was not random. We think it's a personal attack towards Julia, but we've not been able to make an arrest. But he says they have not stopped searching. In April of 2019, the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office, with the assistance of Brunswick County Search and Rescue, went to an area in Castle Hain and conducted an investigation, a search. Lee says they used heavy equipment, dogs, and dozens of people. We're not able to locate Julia's remains at this time. Now they need your help. If anybody has any information on Julia or knows anything about what may have happened to her, has heard rumors throughout the years, We'd like to know any of that. Anything, how minute you may think it is, would be b very beneficial. Anything that could help bring justice for Julia and closure for her daughter. I mean, what's it been like for her? Uh, difficult. She was only a child. She has children of her own now, so she said she understands what being a mom is far more than she did when she was 12 years old. That's why detectives from both agencies will continue standing up for the mother who can no longer stand her ground. This was the mother of a young girl and uh, we fight for the victim. So we want to find Julia and uh, bring a resolution to this case. A resolution to the disappearance and possible murder of Julia Rodriguez. If you have any information, please contact the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. Also in Brunswick County, it may be one of the most well-known and horrific unsolved cases in the Cape Fear. A 23-year-old mother of two brutally killed in her home in the middle of the day with her son in the room. On February 23, 1987, Beverly J. Potter Mintz was at home with her two-year-old son when her mom took Mintz's four-year-old son to run some errands. When Mintz's mom returned to the house, she noticed the door was unlocked, which was odd. Detectives with the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office say Mintz was found brutally murdered, stabbed numerous times, and her throat had been cut. If you have any information, please call the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office. In Wallace, a man shot and killed in the middle of a strong storm in 2015. A look at what happened to Michael Lamb at a convenience store and who called 911. In Pender County, a woman is looking for answers in her grandmother's death. It's a dark memory for Amber Moretti as she searches for the truth in Annie Anderson's death. It happened on August 18, 2014. Moretti says she and her two daughters went to pick Anderson up to take her out to eat. When they arrived, Moretti says the house off Morgan Road was dark and there was broken glass by the front door. She called 911 and waited for deputies to arrive. When they arrived, they went into the house and found uh, Mrs. Anderson inside deceased. When they actually opened the door is what I saw her feet, and that's all I'm glad I ever did see. Detectives believe Anderson opened the door to whoever shot her. Investigators also say there were signs that someone had been looking for something. Some family heirlooms were never found, including very old jewelry. If you have any information, please contact the Pender County Sheriff's Office. In Bladen County, a 20-year-old woman was killed just minutes after asking for help. What happened to Amber Babson on September 14, 2008, remains unsolved. Captain Morgan Johnson with the Bladen County Sheriff's Office says Babson and some of her friends went to a juke joint on Pleasant Garden Road the night of September 13. When they left around 2 o'clock in the morning, he says Babson decided not to ride with her friends and started walking down the road. Johnson says Babson knocked on someone's door to ask for help, but while the homeowner called 911, Babson continued walking. She was struck by someone uh, and was killed, killed there. Another vehicle left the juke joint and was struck, ran over her, uh, and then stopped and realized what had happened and then called law enforcement. Johnson says detectives are still looking for the driver of the first car. If you have any information, please call the Bladen County Sheriff's Office. 
The Wallace Police Department is looking for answers in a murder that happened in the middle of a power outage from a strong storm in 2015. Rosetta Lamb says on October 4th, 2015, her nephew, Michael Lamb, had gone to the Fast Lane convenience store on NC41 and saw a Duke Energy employee working on the power line. Lamb says Michael started chatting with him, and then detectives say around 10.30 p.m., Michael was shot. That's when the Duke Energy employee called 911. A man down been shot. Come now. Where is he at? On the ground in front of me. It was also raining that Sunday night. I'll never forget it. And to see the puddle of blood on the ground where my nephew was laying dying, and there's nothing you can do but ask why. Detectives with the Wallace Police Department say there was another homicide that happened that morning, so resources were really stretched thin for the day. They now know the two murders were not connected. If you have any information, please call the Wallace Police Department. We have one more case to show you, but this one is no longer unsolved. We'll show you what happened when someone called in an anonymous tip about a man who had been missing for more than 20 years. We're back with a look at what happens when someone gives an anonymous tip. Timothy Smart went missing in Brunswick County in 1995. For more than 20 years, no one knew what happened to him. Until 2018, when my unsolved case aired, the SBI received a tip. A year later, police made an arrest. Two months later, they find Smart's body. And then in November of 2021, a man pleads guilty for his death. Case solved. It was a very happy human being. <laughs> he was very positive. He didn't deserve what happened to him. Timothy Smart grew up in California, but in 1995, he went missing in Boiling Spring Lakes. For years, it weighed on his family. There isn't a Thanksgiving that doesn't go by that I don't remember that we spent it with Tim, and that was the last Thanksgiving we got. Smart's stepmom, Jeanette Smart, says it's been really hard for her and Smart's dad. It has affected him so much he can't even talk about it. Jeanette and a very close family friend, Juanita Verdine, say it was extremely hard for Smart's mom, Gail. So much so that they believe she died of a broken heart in 2016. Tim was her only child. My opinion was her worry, her fretting, her not knowing where her son was, more on her heart till she just gave out. And for almost 25 years, Smart's case remained unsolved until 2019. Every once in a while, the press plays an indispensable role in not only reporting the news, but help us to solve cases. In this particular matter, investigative journalism, coupled with the follow-up work by very seasoned detectives, helped crack a cold case. After our unsolved piece aired, District Attorney John David says they got a tip. Someone had the courage to call in and share information, which literally broke this case wide open. David says that led to a series of interviews among a group of friends from 1995. And in July of 2019, investigators arrested Brian O'Daniels. Two months later, they found Smart's remains buried in a shallow grave in the woods. Two years later, O'Daniels pleaded guilty to second-degree murder with Smart's family watching over video conference. It's bittersweet. It revives a lot of emotions. And while it may be closure, Jeanette says it doesn't feel like justice for anyone. We'll never get Tim back. Mr. O'Daniels is not going to get his life back as to what it could have been. But when you're young and you make bad choices, you have to pay for them. It's not easy, but Jeanette is hoping at least that Tim and Gail are somewhere watching. I prayed to them last night, just asked them to give us support to get through it, and hopefully that they knew we made it. We finally got there. O'Daniels was sentenced to a minimum of 14 years in prison and a maximum of 18 years. I started my unsolved series in 2017, covering more than 40 unsolved cases, but we can't show you all of those cases right now. To see all of those cases and more information on the ones you just saw, head to our website at wwaytv3.com. Thanks for joining us. Good night.